What's going on, everybody? I appreciate you guys hopping in. Um, thank you guys for taking some time out. I apologize about yesterday. Got a little bit uh, tied up with another live thing I had to do, but here we are. Coach B's, what's up? I meant to text you back. Yes, you can, but I slipped my mind, so forgive me on that. Um, but thanks again, guys. We're going to be talking about a few things. Number one thing that we're going to be talking about is some defensive coverages, talking about some different too high things. Um, I want to talk about two high defensive coverages this week. And then next week, what I want to talk about was some one high coverages. But these, these two high coverages are going to be zone action. So they're going to be giving you zone on the back end, zone on the back end. But they are going to be uh, two different types of two high zones. Uh, and I think that everybody knows what a two high zone is. If not, I would go into that. I have my Q and A up. So if you throw a question in there, I can see it pretty quickly. I got that screen rolling, but um, I'm going to bring up the play right now. It's going to be a, I don't, I'm not even sure. I don't know if I have up. Um, Here we are. So, um, yeah, this is going to be better than I thought. This is going to be this front right here. I know we've been talking a lot about fronts and adding that into it. This front is funky, so we're we're not going to get too into that. They have one, oh, two, three guys all to the strong side of the field. So that is not something that. And that's not something you'll get often. Um, and in terms of protecting this, and, and ter this would be a game plan thing. But when we talk about two high zone coverage, um, hold on, let me see something real quick. Can you guys see my mouse? If somebody like uh, lets me know if you guys can see my mouse, that would be helpful because I can uh, talk more on there. Okay, cool. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me pull that screen back up. All right, cool. So this is a, where's my mouse right now? All right. So we have safety, the strength. That's our strong safety. We have a free safety here. Um, and I'll start rolling the play. They motion into a two by two and they still have the odd front. Um, as we can see outside technique here, he's going to be head up over our head up slightly outside of, of number two on the offense. As we talked about last week, we start counting from outside in. So one, two, one, two, and then the back. Uh, they have nickel personnel. And this is going to be strictly quarters. So, um, oh shoot, a little faster than I thought. So when I talk about in terms of quarters, I think I figured out how to make this go slow motion. That's not slow motion, that's really fast. So we talk about this in terms of quarters coverage. This is what we mean. This safety is gonna be responsible for number two. If he goes vertical, if he goes vertical beyond 10 yards, he's gonna be playing him man to man. So he's gonna be playing him man to man after he goes 10 yards vertical. This safety here is the same responsibility for number two to the strength. I mean, which is not the week, has the same responsibility for this number two receiver. So if he goes vertical more than 10 yards, he's gonna play him man to man. But if he were to go flat or out, right, he would leave number two and he would bracket number one. So when they disappear, his eyes would go directly to number one. So if you think about something like a curl flat concept, if he goes flat here right now and he runs a curl, but they're in quarters, the safety no longer has responsibilities for two because he went flat. Now he would be the guy you'd be almost throwing the curl flat off of because you'd have to beat this safety and the safety takes away that curl, you want to get right to the flat. The reason we want to talk about understanding defenses is so that you can know who is in a bind on each play uh, when you go to the line of scrimmage. So if you're like, okay, I see that they're coming out in quarters coverage. 
I know that I'm not necessarily throwing off the cornerback here for this curl flat. I got to look and see if the safety is taking away the curl. If yes, then I got to get my eyes directly down to the flat. And if that flat's taken away, then I need to find my black back or I need to escape. So as we can see here, number two stayed to chip on this side. So do you see the way the safety is angle backpedaling? He's angle backpedaling to number one, right? Because his job is to bracket number one if two disappears. So two stayed, he didn't release vertically. He's gonna angle backpedal to one, they're taking that away. So Aaron Rodgers, his eyes aren't gonna get over here. They got two for one, no need to spend any time there. And then they get right to a dagger concept. So that means he's pushing vertically here, right? That safety's gonna take that away. Um, this quarter ends up playing him like man to man, feeling like he has inside help. Um, and the defense did a good job of forcing pressure. Let's, uh, I'm gonna bring this down for a bit and I wanna see any questions or any chat um, that anybody may have in terms of that. Mm. Does anybody have anything? You guys can ask questions now. I'm gonna download the next video real quick. I thought I could play it the same way, but I cannot. Um, so I would love to talk about that play a little bit more. If you guys have anything um, you wanna know in regards to it. That F, um, that's a good question. So there's sometimes you're going to get fronts like that and you're not, you won't necessarily have a name. That would be a three down front. And in terms of protecting that, uh, what you end up doing typically is you would lock that backside tackle. So you would just go like a 61 protection. Let me bring up the play because that's a good question. I want to show you and explain what I'm talking about. So it, it makes more sense. Hold on. Let me share my screen. Sorry, I'm a little clunky with this thing today. I got a bunch of screens open. And since it's on a different day, Bryce couldn't get on, so he can't help me out here. So I'm a man on my own. All right. I think you guys are good here. You guys can see, I feel like. All right, so I, I didn't really watch the protection last play, but I know that they have three to this side, so I would call that 61 protection. So we would end up locking this tackle on the end. So he's locked, and we're going to slide to the right. Um, so it'd be he's locked on the, on, the, on the end here. The back would be responsible for the nickel to the mic, and one, two, three, four would be responsible for three down to the Sam. So that means back would be going one to two to secondary force in his protection. So if they were to bring one, two, you'd be throwing hot. Uh, since it, at this point, they're in a three by one. Now they're in a three by two, but they went a seven man protection. It was just let you know that this tight end is here to protect. Um, so they are working four down. Let's see what they do in terms of protection. So I'm not telling you. Yep. So they still did the same thing. They went chip for clowning, still brought the tackle here and they still were, these four were responsible for to the Sam or the Mike, depending on how the ID back is looking one to two to release. So um, I can't give you a good name for the front but I can tell you how we should be protecting that thing, if that makes sense. Yeah, James, a, uh, a cover three look is a, that's gonna be a one high zone look. And I got, I think I got like eight really good examples of that for next week. And I know the first week I talked about how they play them from the curl, I mean, from the um, hook to flat defender role, either they're a carry the seams team or passed off and switch team. So I have both of those examples. So I'll get to that next week. Uh, cool. Now, I don't think I have any more questions there. Let me bring up 
Ooh. All right, this is better. This is in my wheelhouse in terms of being able to move it quick time. All right, hold on, let me see this. Um, good route concepts to attack double four. Um, a lot of people run and I have a screen up and I'll just, I will, I will draw something up on here that will make sense in terms of attacking cover four. Oh, this is good. So like we talked about in cover four, the safety is responsible for number two vertical. So if number two goes vertical here, that safety is going to take him. Good. So the corners are going to be an outside technique in quarters like he is right here. I'm not sure. They're in a two-eye zone. I'm not sure if they're in two or quarters here, but he's an outside technique. So he's going to stay outside situation. So if he pushes vertical and runs a deep end, it's a little like we have a go from number one or number two and outside's running the dagger. The safety is now occupied as long as you have something from the back here. So that's a dagger concept. And I'll actually bring up a, a play of that. He occupies the uh, hook defender, which would be the outside linebacker. Uh, the safety is occupied by number two running vertically. Uh, and number one runs the dagger, the deep 18 yard dig. Um, usually at high school, they're running this at 16. Um, that creates two vacancies. Vacancy because the linebacker is put in a bind. Uh, it, his bind would be both horizontal, like should I go out with the back or should I go here with the dig and in a vertical bind, which is here and here because he has a back in front of him and he has a dig behind him. So that's what I mean. Those are, those are the binds. And if you get those guys in both of those type of binds, you should be in really good shape. So that's a good concept. Uh, another good one is, uh, I mean, you can really do a lot of things, but let's just go. So have you seen a basic, which would be a 10 yard in by your tight end and a post by number one, right? If he runs a 10 yard in, who's going to be responsible for him? the safety outside technique by the corner. You have the post. So you know that you can, this, these are called alerts and we talked about those a couple weeks ago. So you have alert versus cover four, you know, if you get the safety, he's going to be attached to number two, you can be alert for the post. And a lot of times you'll see the shallow coming across here. So those are some pretty simple and easy concepts uh, that you can run versus quarters, but anything that's going to put them in those type of bonds. All right. Wouldn't the boundary corner leave the fake? I, I don't, I'm not exactly sure what that means. Um, cool. All right. So now let's go to this concept. This is going to be what I would call cover six. Uh, people have a lot of different names for it. Um, but all we're trying to get to is cover two on one side and quarters on the other. So you will see to the field, the top side here, we're going to be in quarters and to the boundary, we are going to be in cover two. Um, so I'll, I'll play it one time real speed and then I will play it in slow motion. So now you can see how it, it comes together in terms of things that I said before, um, and you'll see how it plays out. So the top, we're in quarters, so he's gonna be in, playing number two. If he goes vertical, which he does, he is going to match him man to man. So you can see this safety eyeing number two. He's working towards him right now. He's taken away. And this cornerback is going to be outside technique of number one. So you have all your posts in breaking routes. You can feel very comfortable throwing those. This corner does, has flat responsibility, but he's sinking to make this throw as difficult as, as possible. He's got a safety over the top and he's working to his half.
The defense did a really good job of pattern matching here. Uh, let's see it one more time. So we can see how everybody works together. Quarters, he's going to be outside technique. They are going to be relating to the back as he releases. They took everything away. Looks like we have some questions. Uh, Chase, if you could put in, what do you mean? What does the outside linebacker watch first? All right. Let me talk about responsibilities again in quarters so that we understand those because we can talk about how they all work together. This is a even front. Uh, you got a mic mug. I'm going to talk about this in terms of what everybody's responsibilities are. Um, so if you think about what people is responsible for, it will, um, it will clear things up a bit for you. So we're going to talk about this cornerback. First things first, you need to ask yourself, does he have earned responsibility? And James, this is getting your question. So, uh, I think it'll help cornerback in this, and he's in cover two on this side. Does he have run responsibility? Yes or no. So ask yourself that. Yes, he does. What is his run responsibility? Um, he has to play outside on the run, so his first his his run responsibility will correlate to his pass responsibility. So stop the run. He has to play outside technique, so that means he funnels him inside um, with the ability to play outside. He's outside contained, stopping the run. So now in cover two, does he have run responsibility? Yes or no? Yes, he does. He is going to be a the the outside linebacker um, who we were just talking about. Yes, he has run responsibility. His first job is to stop the run. He is going to be a C-gap player. Um, if he's not run, he's going to be sinking to the hook. He's going to be alert for crossers uh, with the ability to relate to the back. Mike, does he have run responsibility? Yes, he has in inside gap run support. If he does not have run, he's going to be sinking to the middle hook with the ability to relate to the back. Outside linebacker. Now, on this side, we're going to talk about this like it's quarters. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get to the safety. So free safety. Does he have run responsibility in cover two? Yes or no? No, he does not. So there's no responsibility in the run game, but he does have to sink. Um, he has the ability to play the widest on his and it's his half of the field, the widest and deepest vertical threat on his half of the field. Um, so he will not necessarily always work all the way to the numbers, but he has the ability to play the widest. So if number two goes vertical and number run, one, one runs a hitch, you won't see him working just all the way to the numbers. He has the ability to play the widest and deepest vertical threat to his half of the field. Um, that is an important piece of information for you guys to remember when you start thinking about cover two players. He's not just going to work way off this hash or there's nothing outside threatening vertically. He's going to work so that he can cover the outer most deepest threat uh, on his half of the field. So those are the guys in cover two. Now let's talk about this side in terms of quarters. Mike has inside gap run support. No, he's going to be sinking those middle hook. Ability to relate to the crossers on his side. Quarters. This this do uh, this outside linebacker. Does he have run support? Yes or no? Yes, he does. Now he has outside gap run support. Right, you can see he's outside of number two. Um, and on this side, he's head up with the ability to play inside. The reason he's outside of number two is so he can funnel number two inside. That makes it easier for the safety to play him as he works vertically because the safety also has run support. So safety in cover four versus cover two, safety has inside gap or, or C gap run support. Then he takes his eyes to number two. If number two goes vertically more than 10 yards, he plays a man to man. If he goes shallow or outside, he takes his eyes to number one, right? And now this guy went from funneling number two inside to sinking to his hook um, and then matching up back to his side, right? All key words, and I'm using them specifically for a reason. Cornerback in quarters no longer has run support. Um, he's going to be outside technique of number one. Um, if he goes vertical more than 10 yards, he's going to play him man-to-man. -man. If number one 
were to run like a shallow cross or a hitch and number two goes vertically, um, he will apex number two with the ability to play him vertically. Whew. That was, uh, that was all I got on that. So I think that will let you know who each guy in these coverage, coverages are looking at first. Uh, cool. Then let's work to the Q&A. Um, does the cornerback pre-snap leverage give away whether it's going to be two or four? Uh, it can, but that, that can only happen during film study. Um, if you start playing at a high, he asks, does uh, the cornerback's leverage in two or quarters give away what type? Yeah, you're not going to see um, inside technique from a cornerback in cover two. Uh, that would just be bad practice because he has outside gap run support, remember? So his run responsibility and his pass responsibility have to match up. That's what makes a defense sound. Um, so if he's inside, yeah, you can eliminate cover two, but if they're a team that plays quarters and matches their cornerbacks outside all the time, then they could just be playing a man-to-man. -man. So that could still be a possibility. Um, so inside, inside leverage is typically an indicator of man-to-man -man coverage, but it won't, be, um, it, it won't be too massive in terms of the look from the cornerback, if that makes, that should make sense. I'm not gonna ask it makes sense. Um, okay, good, I appreciate that. Um, done, done. All right, does anybody have any questions on that? Danny, I, if you ask me again, like try and clear that up, I want to be able to help you and understand that. Let me download uh, another clip. All right, so we just talked about two instances, uh, two situations where they are bringing uh quarters coverage i gotta i'm gonna download this next video um, just so i can see it and watch it more slowly uh, does anybody have any questions on any of these uh, any of the things that we just watched cool uh Cover six is a combination of, yeah, pre-snap, it, it looked like cover, you could say it looked like cover two, but it looked like a two high zone. Those are in the two high zone families, right? So think about them in terms of family. One high zone family, two high zone family. So one high zone family is gonna be like cover three. It's gonna be Ripley's match. Uh, it'll be all those different sorts of things. Cover two zone, you can get Half the field is going to be playing cover two, half is going to be playing cover four, like we just watched, which is cover six. Um, it could, two eyes on could be totally cover four, could be totally cover two, all those different things. As long as they have two high safeties to start to play and they end up winning the zone. Cover six, you can run like smash, all the things that you like versus cover two, and then all the things that you like versus quarters. Um, but the way that I've always been taught football is using peer progressions to understand these things. Cool. All right, I'm going to get to a too high uh, zone blitz. Uh, let me share the screen. You guys can't see the screen, I reckon. Uh, all right, cool. So we have them in a three down front, one, two, three defensive linemen. They have both their backers uh, mugged and they have um, two high safety look, slightly inside of number two, slightly inside of number two. I'm going to be thinking that it's quarters here just based on their alignment. So I use the term zone blitz. Um, and Josh talked about this yesterday. Zone blitz is a term that I will use anytime they're in zone and they bring five defenders and they drop six in coverage. So they have one, two, three, four uh, defense, four guys playing their quarters coverage and two linebackers uh, dropping to get to those responsibilities. They are bringing Mm 
they they double mugged here and this could be we'll just call him the nickel he's going to be inside technique he's bringing pressure they drop both of their linebackers who are inside mugged up and they get to a what i would call this is a four zone blitz so these guys are all running cover four they no longer have the middle hook defender so both the inside linebackers are running a bastardized form form of this quarter so they're not going to be able to get as wide they're going to be sinking to uh inside hooks or middle hooks um and still trying to do all the same principles of quarters uh the ravens are going to be running a a uh they're going to be running a vertical concept a four verts concept so that forces both of these safeties to match on to number twos uh, so I want you guys to think about if, if I get quarters, right, and these safeties are locked on, I know that my outside receivers are going to be one-on-one. On, one on one. Um, and if Lamar would have had probably more time in the pocket here, he, he could have worked um, to the, I guess, the wide side of the field at the top of the screen. But the zone blitzes are something that indicates to you that it's just going to be five guys in pressure, six guys in coverage, and they're still going to be running uh, so, so you can see how those inside linebackers are going to be relating to the receivers in their zones, in their middle hooks, taking those things away, and then we're going to have the comebacks on the outside, and Lamar just misses. So those, that's an, an example of a quarters with zone blitz, zone blitz principles on the back end. Got it. Does uh, I'm a little worried that uh, this stuff might be kind of intricate. Um, if you guys ask questions, I'd love to answer. And I'm gonna open up the floor in a second. I have one more concept I want to show, but if if this is kind of funky or too much. In quarters, who has so if you remember, I said uh, in quarters, the linebackers have first the outside linebackers have outside gap run support, sinking to the uh, sinking to the hook with the ability to relate to the back. So that means that the back comes out to their side, they can relate to them, but they're not let's say going to match them man to man. The inside linebacker has run response inside gap run responsibility, sinking to his middle hook. Um, alert for all crossers, then he has the ability to relate to the back coming out to his side. So everybody has a responsibility in terms of the backs coming out and then you can uh, handle that from there. Where would I, where would you slide the, this? Where would I slide the protection in this front? All right, let me look at it. Uh, one, two, three. One, two, three. Um, so if this was me, I would slide the three-man side. I would just 5-0 this. So rather than me trying to slide it three-man, two-man, I'm just going to make a 5-0 call here, 5-0, 5-0, and I'm going to make one, two, three, four. I'll make those five down so we'd be responsible for them. Um, my back would be scanning one to two. Um, and then we would make it work from there because it's very difficult for them to bring both, both and the line would have to sort that out. So I'd make a 5-0 a call. Um, other people would go send this two-man side here. So one, two, and they're going to sort it out for one, two, and then make this a three-man side. So lock on the nose two for two and then the back goes here. I just don't love doing that because I want to have a built-in hot. I mean, they still got, they still got got. So a defense considers their, themselves to win in terms of protection. Anytime they can get two guys, anytime two guys are blocking one person, the defense won, won that battle. 
And as you can see here, they have one, two, three, and two, so they won. Defensive coordinator chalks it up as a win. Anytime we miss there, get two guys on one guy, get a hit on the quarterback or a free runner, the defensive coordinator did his job. Yeah, I, I uh, went over what everybody's job would be in the 4-3 cover four on the uh, last joint. I'm, I'm in the last play. Um, so I, I'm, I record these and I'll get these back up. Uh, they all get to YouTube pretty quickly. Mm -mm -mm, stop it, share. Let me get to a, another concept then. So we just saw two examples of that. Now let me get to I just I gotta show this play and okay. Good. Now we're in the red zone. All right. I'm gonna give this one more thing, and this is this is um I can't slow it down as much because I just have it in a different program than other stuff, but uh this is a team. So one of the things that you need to study every week, or that I have my guys study every week, is how do teams play us in bunch coverage? We have bunch right here, one, two, three, and then what indicators are they going to give you for how they're going to play them, right? So the Baltimore Ravens are an NFL team, and they're always really, really uh, – they do an elaborate job of bringing different pressures, disguising things, and making it look tough. But there's only so many ways you can play bunch. You can play everybody takes their man and runs with them no matter what. Um, you can exchange, you can have the point, play the point and have these two, uh, one and two exchange or banjo it, right? Um, and you can also have the point, play the point and then jump to the inside receiver, have the uh, number three defender take number two and number one take number one. Or you can have him jump number one and those two banjo it. So if you know what teams are going to do when you get bunch coverage going into the week based on their alignment, you're going to be in really good situations. So we have uh, the nickel, we'll just call them nickel safety corner, just to make it easy on us. We have the nickel who's pressed. They're all on different levels. So when you start seeing things like that, that will indicate to me um, that it's likely that these teams are going to try and play him man to man throughout and try and run and not exchange the coverage. Um, that's why teams get on different levels so that they're not picking each other and guys can work through these things clearly. But if I get something like that, I would know that based on alignment and leverage, um, if number two is running something like an inside release route like he is right here, they're kind of, they are beat by alignment. Um, and another thing that I want you guys to look at, these are things you'll start seeing right away. The more you guys, so understanding what you should be doing on offense is to the the one on one side. We do have free access. Um, we have no threat from a weak side defender who's going to be in our uh, who's going to be taking away our throwing window. So we would if we had a play that was a progression with the option like we talked about earlier or in the earlier weeks. This option is a give me a gimme. He's playing off. Um, I know that I don't have a, a weak side defender taking it away. Um, if I have something like a hitch or something like that, I need to be taking that. They don't, they're not running a play with the progression of the option. They are running a concept that puts them on a wheel. They're likely doing that because they know that they're not getting an exchange coverage here. He has to run what is called the hump. He's running a flat and go. And that's why they call a concept like that. They still did an excellent job uh, covering it. I mean, they're in the NFL, so they make touchdowns. So those are things that we need to start looking for um, in terms of coverage. So we see him point guy running with this inside guy running with inside. That's very difficult. He's outside technique. He's outside technique. So they're beat a few different ways by alignment. Um, and he just made an excellent throw. 
Uh, Tannehill's got to work on his mechanics. His front side's a little sloppy. He's getting all over the place. That, I think that made a lot of sense. To me, it did. Cool. Now, I want to open up if anybody has a hand raise. Wow. Good, good, good. I, so what I'm going to do next week is I'm going to I'm going to have one high zone concepts. I'm going to show different examples of teams exchanging a uh, bunch concepts. I'll show one of the different forms. I'm just not sure which one will come up. First, as I start doing film study this week, because I got to cut all these things up for you guys and make it look good. Um, and then I'll have those all ready on the other program where I can slow things down. And I'll also create some cards or slides for you so you guys can take them home. Um, I'm creating a full curriculum because one of the reasons I want to do these webinars is to understand what people need to understand more. Um, and it's going to build in drills, defensive coverages, offensive concepts, and then a year-round plan on what I would do based on what level of quarterback I was. So I want you guys to do a better job of understanding defenses, understanding what's going on in the field, um, and start playing quarterback, not only physically, but mentally as well. Um, uh, okay, I'll answer all these questions. What are some of the characteristics that you look for in a quarterback? Um, if I was a college coach, it would be different than what I look for. So what I look for is mental toughness. That's the first thing, like you gotta be tough, you gotta be a quick decision maker, you gotta be a good process of information. Then it's gonna be arm talent and then the ability to move, uh, be an athletic quarterback, those are important to me. Um, Will, I, um, Will, for your bracket co co question, I, I have some good plays. I just don't have them in this drive, I have them on my hard drive. So I will give you guys bracket I'll go get throw bracket in next week. If you had okay, so we talked about Max. We talked about free access. So free access means that you're not in press coverage. Um, you don't have a overhang defender who's taking away the single cut receiver. So if you have an individual route, you should feel good about throwing that. Whether it's a hitch, a stop, a speed out, um, your idea is that my receiver is going to be better. So He's playing off man. You can take any of the uh, individual options on that single cut side without the overhang defender. Um, I talked about the plows. Where can I purchase them? I don't have the link on me. Anthony, if you text me, Anthony, if you text me, I mean, email me or DM me, I will send you, no, at message me on some. I'll, I'll get you the info for that. You sh so throwing a post versus cover four is one of the things you're looking for. That is an alert. If you have something from number two that is going to occupy the safety because the cornerback is going to be outside of your number one receiver. He's going to be outside. Number two is going to be playing. Number two is going to be playing number two if he goes more than 10 yards vertical. So if you have like a basic or a 10 yard in route by your line or your tight end or number two receiver, and then a run is running a post by alignment that is open. Um, so you should be able to do that. Wow. Coach Sean coming in the clutch, banging you out with the, whoa, uh, providing you with the link for the playa balls. Uh, key points and tips I will give to an incoming ninth grade quarterback. I would tell you to compete your tail off, uh, go in there with the mind ready to learn. And then I would start trying to understand uh, what my team did the previous years, how I can be helpful. Um, and then when I go to camp, the thing that I would do is I would see what the varsity or quarterbacks who are in front of me in the program are doing better than me at that time. And I think you guys – I don't necessarily think you guys, I think that a lot of times um, both parents and players are not realistic um, in terms of being honest with yourself about an honest evaluation. Am I doing good enough? Am I actually playing better this kid? And if so, why? But I would take a look and evaluate what are the people 
doing better than me, okay? And what am I doing better than them? And be very, very honest. Um, be more critical of yourself than them. And then when you start thinking, okay, he's doing better than this than me, I would start chopping wood at all those different components so that I could catch up to them in those areas. Does the safety take it on the two if you guys are passing the last cut outside? So in quarters coverage, if number two runs, let's say he's going to run a 12-yard sale. He pushes up 12 yards, he's outbreaking. The safety is going to play him man to man because he went vertically more than 10 yards. If he ran a five yard out, no, then my eyes go to number one. But if he if he goes more than 10 yards, his job is to play him man to man. Sorry about that. Now, I know in high school, sometimes it looks different. They just look like they have four guys and they backpedal. Uh, you should be able to light them up in so many different ways if that's what they're doing. You could just run a bunch of daggers because the cornerback won't relate to number one so yes the safety should play a man to man if he's runs outside what age do i start to teach film I, I i don't you don't need to dive too deep into film i would start getting on the board understanding coverages so you have a better idea of what defenses are um, so if i was in seventh grade i would start diving into film Uh, what are the things I have to correct the most when I'm training a quarterback? Uh, that's, that's, I mean, so many different things. Uh, whatever, whatever they're lacking, we're, we're fixing up. What happened if defense changes cover three? Okay, so if defense changes coverage on you, uh, just like a post snap safety rotation and they give you a completely different look than what you're expecting. One, most teams don't do that in high school. Um, it's pretty tough for them to do that in college. They have to give you certain tells in terms of what they're doing just because, um, like I said, it, they have run responsibilities that incorporate with the pass responsibilities. So they have to get there and make that happen. But if you get caught in a situation where you get completely tricked in terms of what the coverage was, Depends on what kind of play it is. If it's a progression with the option, you still should be starting with your option. If that's not there, then you work your progression and the, the way that you're reading progression never changes. Just what kind of binds people are in. We're gonna talk about binds next week as well. So what kind of binds are in? If you start understanding what kind of binds are in and you're late, then you can just work through that. Um, if it's a pure progression, your reads never change. Um, a lot of times you know, in high school, your coaches are gonna go mirrored routes. So I might have smash on both sides or go out on both sides, and that's just going to be best look. So wherever the rotation works, all you need to do is work away and make it happen. Uh, I, I, I no longer do the, the highlight evaluation. Mm, if there are any resources I recommend for freshmen, QBIQ, I think, does a good job of explaining things generally, like giving you an idea of what things are. Um, as a ninth grade quarterback, it could be helpful. Um, and you start getting a, a higher level of quarterback play, I think that you need to, um, I don't wanna like market my own thing, but I don't think that there's a lot of good information out there. Uh, so Justin Murphy, if I was a sixth grade quarterback, I would be all in on QBIQ. I would be all in starting to understanding those things. I think they do a great job there in that market. I don't want to start marketing my own thing, but I'm going to I'm going to get all these coverages and everything built up in a library, and then I'll be able to kind of disseminate the information so you guys can see plays. Yeah, so front end linebackers will dictate coverage um, because everything works in a string. That's good information. I, that's something I need to come back to next week with cover three. Uh, if your own line isn't the best, uh, tell them to get better, but that's uh, it's not like a good reason to not do well. Like I, I, that's, to me, it's an excuse. Your O-line is your O-line. You need to make adjustments, whether it's adding your ability to be dynamic in the pocket or escape or whatever. The corners are part of the string. Everything, 
the linebackers, corners, and safeties are part of the stream, but I'll explain there. I need, I need to show you guys like visually and I don't have anything cut up where I can like point it at. Cool. If anybody wants to hop on and say anything, I will answer that real quick. Uh, I said that was running the hump. Running the hump. Running the hump is when you have to run through defenders and it ends up being a race. So you'll see that like on goal line when they make you run through defenders, like the, the slant, flat, they call it running the hump when you have to run over a defender underneath. I'm not sure where you can find QBIQ. I think uh, you probably Google it, pop right up. Cool. Um, anybody have anything? I don't see any hands raised. If there are, I think I can let you. Yeah, I said I'll talk about the bracketing. I, I got to do one high zone first. I'll talk about brackets after that. I'll talk about brackets. So next week I got the one high zone. The week after that I got to do, uh, I need to do the string and I'll add in brackets. So next week's one high zone and some ways to pass off zone, uh, bunch coverage. Um, and then the week after that, I will get to bracketing because I've seen that question a couple times. But if you guys don't know the core concepts, talk about things like that, aren't that helpful, in my opinion. When I say run support, that means do you have run responsibility, yes or no? So um, you need to make people's jobs very defined when you start doing coverages and defenses make things binary. Is it, is he playing the run? Yes or no. Does he have this? Yes or no. Um, and some people do not like if you're in cover three, the free safety of the middle field safety has no run, run responsibility. So he won't even, he shouldn't run towards the ball carrier until they pass the line of scrimmage because that's not his job. Um, so you need to start understanding those when it comes to play action passes, all those different things. Cool. Oh, got a hand. Anthony, you're you're about to have you talk. Anthony, what's up, bro? What's up, coach? Can you hear me? I can hear you amazing. You sound like you have a mic, like it sounds good. Hell yeah, Dr. Dre up in here, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just wondering now that we have a lot of time on our hands for quarantine, mm -hmm. and obviously I don't want to overuse my arm constantly, but I mean, I'm going into my senior year. Mm -hmm. and I do a lot of band work and stuff just because I played baseball before. But how many days a week would you recommend having a serious throwing session? Because I don't want to get ahead of myself. I don't want to miss out on opportunities to grind. Good question. What month is it? It is about to be May. Hold on. Let me pull up my calendar for what I have guys doing right now. Football, all right. Um, it's interesting because I'm literally going over all this information right now about what phases we're in because I'm shoot hold on I'm gonna pull it up I'm sorry before I I just don't want to tell you anything that's not good information yeah I feel you and you're in your senior. So this would be, so typically this would be camp phase as I'm looking at it. So, so I'm going, I'm a, I'm a junior right now. I'm going into my senior year. Yeah. So right now you'd be like doing like the elite camps, like the Under Armour, the 11, all those different things. So yeah, this, this can be a heavy ramp. Um, this can, you can ramp things up right now in terms of your development. You can throw, um, we would be throwing a lot. So you can throw up to four to five days a week. I'm going to share this with you. I'm going to share this with everybody. This is um, the thing that I am doing. And I'll let you guys see it based on your age. Um, this has a good bit of stuff on it, but I don't think you guys will tell anybody. Okay, so I would put you May. 
So June, each quarterback has developed the skills. Um, you, you guys have like made corrections in your throwing mechanics. So you want to put yourself in the most difficult situations this May and June and throw as much as possible because this is like an on-ramp program for you guys. So you want to make May and June very, very difficult. You want to uh, push the limits of your arm, throw as much as you can in order to develop, but you want to be doing difficult things that challenge you. So you want them to be hard or harder than um, you would have made them when you were like going into camp. Um, so you can make them as difficult as possible. And then when you get to July, July is uh, like a form, like coming back to form. You want to have your confidence up. You want to start building so that you're ready for the season. So that's what I would do right now if I was you and I was in high school. I mean, going to my senior. So I think that should answer your question. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, cool. All right. That looks like all the questions. No one else has anything. Um, if you got something else you guys want answered or anything like that, just uh, shoot me a text. I got the next two weeks kind of built out and I'll be able to do you recommend this in season training. So, yes, I do recommend in season training. I have all my guys in Atlanta trained once a week. That is on Sundays. And we do that in Atlanta, Charlotte, and uh, Houston. Um, the reason is you don't want to let all the things that you've done in terms of form deteriorate during the season. So we call that our skill sharpening Sundays program in season. Cool. All right. That looks like everything. All right. Look forward to seeing you guys next Wednesday, not next Thursday. I messed it up. I apologize. I will fix it. Won't be late again or won't miss again. Thank you guys. Hope you guys have an amazing day or evening or 14.